Donald Trump has been very busy in his final hours before departing from office. In the wee hours of the morning, he issued a slew of pardons and jail time reductions for a variety of people, connected business figures, corrupt political figures, celebrities, artists. Names missing from the list, though, are gathering just as much attention as those who are on it. So let us go to our senior Washington editor, Lindsay Duncombe. We were expecting the pardons, Lindsay, and we got them a deluge. A deluge and really at the last minute around midnight last night, uh, one of the holdups uh, apparently from the White House was that Donald Trump was going back and forth as to whether or not to pardon Steve Bannon, um, who he has had a tumultuous relationship since uh, Bannon, the former, Breit former Breitbart founder, uh, was part of the campaign in 2015. Ultimately, Bannon did make the list. He has been charged, although it hadn't gone to trial yet, in relation to a scheme uh, to raise money for Trump's border wall. Those are fraud-related charges. So Bannon's on the list. Uh, so is a former mayor of Detroit who is serving a 28-year sentence for corruption. Also, Elliot Brody. He is an early fundraiser for Donald Trump. He had been, he pleaded guilty in relation to foreign lobbying charges. You mentioned uh, celebrities. Rapper Lil Wayne was pardoned in relation to a, a gun charge. Uh, so certainly, as you described it, a, a deluge. But uh, these were sort of uh, definitely in, in line with uh, what we were expecting. But what we didn't see was Donald Trump issue a preemptive pardon for himself or for any of his family. That's something that reportedly had been under discussions and consideration at the White House, uh, but they did not go that far. Although, you know, he's still president now. Who knows what's going to happen uh, before noon? Markedly, though, uh, Donald Trump gave a video address marking the end of his presidency. He did not mention Joe Biden's name, and he touted his uh, um, accomplishments. Here's just a bit of that. I did not seek the easiest course. By far, it was actually the most difficult. I did not seek the path that would get the least criticism. I took on the tough battles, the hardest fights, the most difficult choices, because that's what you elected me to do. Your needs were my first and last unyielding focus. This, I hope, will be our greatest legacy. So that is not the last we'll see of Donald Trump. He is scheduled to leave the White House this morning around 8 a.m. There will be a send-off at Andrews Air Force Base where he is expected to speak. Unclear if it'll be that Donald Trump uh, sort of sticking to a script or if we're going to hear more unfounded lies and claims about a, a rigged election. But Donald Trump is leaving office facing several challenges personally, Heather. Money is one of them. Um, he has bills coming due. His ability to really make his reputation put money in the bank is is diminished greatly as a result of his tumultuous uh, presidency, especially since uh, the corporate reaction to what happened on Capitol Hill on December on, on January the 6th. And also, uh, Donald Trump is facing a second impeachment trial. And, and that will, uh, we've seen indications from Re Republicans that there's the possibility he may be convicted. A conviction could lead to him not being able to run for office before. We know Donald Trump has signaled he wants to run again. So uh, this is a president who is also facing uh, really unprecedented legal battles on the other side, prosecutions uh, related to financing uh, in the Southern District of New, New York. Uh, uh, so there's a whole bunch of, of stuff that Donald Trump is walking into, not a lot of it uh, very pleasant. The other thing, though, that we have to remember in all of this is that there are millions upon millions of people who believe Donald Trump. And one of the things to watch for as Joe Biden's administration gets underway is just how much influence, how relevant Donald Trump will continue to be. And that's something that is unknown. 
Lindsay, thank you. As I listen to you, I'm looking forward to our coverage today. You know what I'm thinking back to? I'm thinking back to March when I was there in Washington with you and it was Super Tuesday and Joe Biden's clinching the nomination for the Democratic Party was anything but certain. And then it all started to coalesce around him then on Super Tuesday. And here we are today. It's quite an extraordinary period between then and now. Indeed. I'll look forward to today as Lindsay Duncombe joins in our special coverage for you.